this video is going to introduce an important factoring trick that students tend to gloss over at this point because they feel like they don't need this shortcut here. But it does set up some nice stuff long term. So this is actually one that's important to take the time to learn and figure out how it works as it comes up more as we continue to look at our algebra studies. If you've got something like a plus b squared, this is called a perfect square. It's something that's just nicely squared. And you recall from multiplying polynomials that what we do is we square the first term, a squared, and then the product, a, b, is there twice. So we had two a, b's, and then you would square the last term to get b squared. What we're going to do here is do that exact same process backwards. And the way we identify that is if we look at the first and last term and say, hey, I can take the square root of both of those. If we can take the square root of the first and last term, it may be a perfect square. And so we're going to want to see if it actually is by checking, again, as always, the middle term. So for example, if we have x squared minus 10x plus 25, we say, hey, we can take the square roots of the first and last terms. The square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. To test the middle term, we're going to always multiply by a 2. That comes from the formula. So x times 5 times 2, always a 2, that equals 10x. And notice that matches in the middle. So that tells us we have a perfect square. It's going to factor to something squared. We take the square root we just found, the sine from the middle, and the square root we just found. This is x minus 5 squared. Let's look at another one. 9x squared plus 30xy plus 25y squared. Take a second to look at it. Can we take the square roots of the first? and last terms. We can. The square root of 9x is 3x. The square root of 25y squared is 5y. We multiply those by 2, always 2. 3x times 5y times 2. 3 times 5 is 15, times 2 is 30xy. And sure enough, that matches in the middle. We have a perfect square. Take the square root we just found, the sine from the middle, and the square root we just found. This is 3x plus 5y squared. If we can take the square roots of the first and last terms, we may have a perfect square. It's important to note that if you do factor this the other way, the old way, this first example might have come out to x minus 5 times x minus 5. This is not considered completely factored until it has the squared on it, which is why we prefer identifying the perfect square method so that we don't miss the duplicated factor. So identify the perfect square, use the shortcut, and it's going to be a lot easier to factor problems like these.